With some 3D printing processes, models that are hollow will cost a lot less to print than models that are solid. There are several ways to make a model hollow in ZBrush, which I have shown in other courses. However, the new Boolean features give us a whole new way to get accurate wall thickness. This is especially useful when the model that you want to make hollow is made up of several objects. Let's see how it works. So I've got this model here, and as you can see in the subtools, it's made up of several different objects. We've got the head, and we've got two eyeballs, and we've got the body. Now with other ways of making this model hollow, you'd have to make each subtool hollow independently and then cut holes from one subtool to the other so that it can be hollow all the way through and that becomes cumbersome. Or another way to do it is to dynamesh the whole thing together, but then you lose the ability to control the different subtools independently, which is a really valuable thing to have. So with live booleans, we can actually have the best of both worlds. We can cut one hole that goes through everything, but also still have the ability to control all of our subtools independently. So the first thing that I want to do is to create a new tool that is a combination of all of the existing tools, and then from that we'll create a hole that can cut out of the entire model. Okay, so jumping right into it, let's combine all of our visible subtools. So in the subtool palette, let's come down to merge and we'll merge visible. This makes a new tool here. We can switch to this where everything is merged into one. Now this is going to be for the hollow interior. So it doesn't matter if there's any color on it. I kind of find the color distracting. So I'm just going to fill everything white and let's go ahead and dynamesh it. This will fuse everything together. So under geometry, let's go to dynamesh and just simply click on dynamesh. All right, let me zoom in here and hit shift F to turn on my wireframe. You can see it pretty much kept the overall shape, but it's not overly dense. If it needs to be more or less dense, you can undo it and then change the resolution higher or lower, whatever works for you. Just make sure it's high enough resolution that it captures all the, the shape, but not so high that it's just you know going to crash your computer. Now we need to find a way to shrink this model inwards to make a hollow space. And it's a little bit of a hack ZBrush wasn't really made to do what I'm about to do, but it works. So let's go ahead and insert a cutting object that will cut a hole in the base. So I'm going to hit B to bring up my brushes. And let's see, I'm going to select IMM primitives. So with this selected, we can now hit M on the keyboard to bring up the different primitives that we can insert. And I just want to insert a cylinder. Now what I want to do is make this a negative object so it cuts a hole. So I'm going to hold down Alt and click and drag out this cylinder. And so this makes a cylinder on the inside. And actually I'm going to get my gizmo, just hitting W on the keyboard. And I want to move that down just a little bit to make sure it's going to intersect with that to cut out the hole. Okay, back into draw mode. One other thing that I want to do here is measure how much thickness I should give this. Now this is a full color model and let's say I want to print it, let's say through Shapeways in full color sandstone. The minimum wall thickness is about 0 0.08 inches. So let me zoom in close to this hole. And what I'm going to do is get my transpose line out. So you want to get into your gizmo and then make sure you can turn off the gizmo mode, so we're in transpose line mode. I'm just going to click and drag out a transpose line. And until you notice up here in the units and the distance, what this is. So right now it's 0 0.08. So that's the minimum wall thickness. I like to go just a little bit bigger. It's like 0 0.09, just to be on the safe side so I don't get it rejected from Shapeways. Now this of course assumes that I've got my model scaled to the overall size and in inches that I want it to be eventually. Okay, so now that we've measured what 0 0.09 inches looks like, we can see how many polygons from one end of this measuring line it is to the other. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's nine Dynamesh voxels equal to 0 0.09 inches. So we'll just remember nine. So we can zoom out now. 
and under Create Shell, we can set the thickness to 9. And click Create Shell. Oh, it's reminding me that I have to clear the mask on the model. When I inserted that cylinder, it masked off everything else. So I'm just going to hold down Control, click and drag in an open space to clear that mask, and now we can create the shell. Okay, looks like it cut it out. Let's go back into draw mode here, and let me clear my wireframe with Shift F. So what you can see that this did is it created a hollow interior that's offset by 0 0.09 inches. Now what we've done so far is actually pretty close to the technique that we would use to hollow a model if we didn't care about fusing everything together into one. But this is just an intermediate step now for the new way to use live booleans where we can keep everything as a separate subtool, but also have this cutout that will go through everything. So we need to separate the inside from the outside. Now one thing that this did is it colored that cylinder black, and so now it's left painted black. So we can use that to our advantage. Let's go to masking, and we'll mask by color and intensity. So what that did is it masked everything that was black. Now let's go up to visibility and click hide PT. So what this is going to do is going to hide everything that's not masked. And then we can hold down control and shift, click and drag in an open area to invert the visibility. And now we can go to poly groups and auto groups. So what this does is it's going to make everything that's unconnected to something else its own poly group. So if I hit shift F, you can see now that that inside is now its own polygroup. So now I want to make it so that the outside is hidden and the inside is visible. I'm going to go ahead and control shift click on the inside. So now we've got only the outside visible and then control shift click one more time on the outside to invert that visibility. Okay, now we can delete what is hidden. So let's go to geometry. And let's see, we'll go down to modify topology and Dell hidden. Okay, so we've got just the inside of that shell created now. Let's go back to Dynamesh, and we can just hold down Control, click and drag in an open area to rerun Dynamesh. And you can see that flipped it back the right side out again, and then it closed off that hole in the bottom. One last thing I want to do is drag this hole down a little bit further to make sure it goes through to the other side. So I'm going to hold down Control and Alt and drag a box over the bottom of that. So that leaves this part unmasked and everything else is masked. We'll get the gizmo out. You might want to hit Y to go back into gizmo mode and we'll just drag that down. Back into draw mode, we can clear the mask, control, click and drag in an open area. Shift F to turn off wireframe. And now we can copy this tool as a subtool into the original model. So let's go into subtool copy, we'll go back to the original model, and paste. And now you can see we've got this model in here. If I go into transparent mode, you can clearly see that inner portion of the Dynamesh shell is now on the inside of this model. We can get out of transparent mode. And let's turn on live boolean. So let's make a new start group with the top subtool here. And then we just want to make this hollow part, the cutting away object the Boolean subtraction. And now you can see that we've still got all of our subtools as individual objects, but we've also got this cutting subtool that cuts through everything. So it's a little bit more cumbersome to set up than other ways, but it gives you so much more freedom for making changes after you've made this hollow cutting out portion. So now let's say we want to get this exported for 3D printing. All we have to do now is run the boolean make boolean mesh function and it'll just take a few seconds to process this and now we can go back to this new model that it just created and you can see we've got that hole cut all the way through now you could export it pretty simply by going to z plugin 3d print hub we want to get the update size ratios And then we could go to export VRML. Let's do the options first. Let's make sure polypaint is turned on. And then we would just simply click export to VRML and we'd be good to go.